everybody, and thank you for joining me for this episode. Today I'm joined by Ben Earl, the Executive Director of Feed the Need in Durham, and he shares some information about the recent spike in demand for food and food support, as well as the kind of concerns and dangers of, a, of the long-term damage that recessions can have on food security, and also the immense support and public help that Feed the Need and, and local food banks have been getting from restaurants and, and individuals in the community stepping up. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode as much as I did. It's a bit of a quick one. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining me today, Ben. I really appreciate your time uh, sharing some information about how Feed the Need works. Um, I know you're a very important part of a very important establishment in Durham, but there's a few people that I know that don't really know exactly um, the extent that Feed the Need operates. So is there uh, the possibility of you sharing sort of what Feed the Need really does and, and how you guys work right now? Yeah, so um, yeah, I can talk a bit about what we are and who we are. Um, so Feed the Need is the emergency food hub for the region. Uh, that means that we support, um, uh, we support 62 emergency food providers. Uh, that includes food banks, but can include many other types of organizations that, uh, that work on food security and, um, and food uh, issues in the community. Um, so our job is to collect um, large volumes of food, store it, sort it, um, and get it out to those organizations so that they can feed uh, people in the community. Uh, so that's what we do. Um, obviously, now uh, with with everything going on, we've been called into action at a, a at a higher level. Uh, there's a lot more uh, need uh, that we're seeing, at least in the short term. Um, we're not sure what that's going to mean long term, but in the short term, um, we're having uh, we're having um, that growth in need uh, in our community. So we've been we're having to respond to that. Um, we're doing that by increasing the amounts of food that we bring in. We're doing that by um, creating good relationships with our members and partners uh, on how we can um, get food, uh, more food into the system, uh, into the emergency system, and get food to individuals who need it the most in our community. Now, on, in terms of uh, accessing that food and acquiring it, I know that you guys talk about sort of the, the bulk purchasing uh, ability of, of Feed the Need mm -hmm. and how you're able to really take that money farther than an individual could on their own. Uh, so donating to you guys really does tend to go the farther way. Has there been a yep. difficulty sourcing food now with everything happening? Um, we haven't had difficulty actually sourcing it, but it's slower. Um, so we're able to make the purchases that we, we usually do um, in terms of buying food, um, but we're waiting longer for the delivery of that food. Um, so as the food system is sort of catching up with sort of that initial run that happened when, when people were seeking out to, to stock up, uh, which made sense, um, we're sort of now dealing with sort of as the, as the food system catches up. So everything's, we're still able to source most of what we want, but it's taking longer. Uh, and it's, um, it's a little slower than normal, which has an impact on our sort of week to week supply, but not necessarily on our overall supply, but, uh, which is good. We can still use our infrastructure and leverage it to bring food to our community. Um, even if it takes a little bit longer. That's awesome to hear. I, that's definitely a concern for me. Just from my brief log logistics background is having things take longer to show up and not being able to get them where they need to go. Um, now as a restaurant owner now, I find that like food prices are going up this year or like yeah. kind of across the board and things are getting a lot more expensive. And I think that's affecting prices across my industry. Are you finding that even with, uh, purchasing food now, it's getting a bit more expensive on your side too? Yeah, it is getting a little more expensive for us, um, in terms of, um, what is costing us to bring food in. Uh, we haven't seen, because we buy in bulk, we haven't seen at large, such large volume. We haven't seen a massive impact yet because we do get some price reductions based on volume. Um, but we are seeing it. Uh, our bigger worry though on that front is that um, it's impacting the people served by our network. Uh, when people's cost at the, at the grocery store goes up, we have, um, we're having challenges uh, to, to get them the food that they need. Um, and that they're, sorry, they're having challenges getting the food that they need, and which means they're relying more on emergency um, sources uh, more often than maybe they would have traditionally. Wow. And so how do people typically access the food that you service? So if, if, I, if someone were to go to the yeah. grocery store and they, they are unable to afford what they're looking for, how does someone then get into a channel to be able to be supported by you guys? They would, um, the way that they, ch they would find a local organization, uh, one of our member agencies, um, they're listed. If you go to feed the need you can find all the organizations that are affiliated with us. Uh, and they would approach that organization and access one of the programs that they have, depending on what that program looks like. Um, they would, uh, whether it's the food bank program or a hamper program or a meal program, they would access it that way. Uh, but there's, like I said, in our network, there's 62 organizations that um, really 
um, can they can provide that point of contact and access. Uh, so that's the best way to do it. And if they, you know, if, if someone can't find the right place to go to, they can always reach out to us directly and we can help guide them. Awesome. Um, now, in terms of acquiring food, I know that that's been a challenge for a lot of people. But in terms of sorting that food and getting those services, have you found a difficulty with manpower or any sort of human resources going on in this kind of situation? Um, we've had a reduction in volunteers, um, rightfully. I mean, a large portion of our volunteers were, were seniors, um, which is fantastic, but uh, obviously they're taking precautions. Um, so we've had some drop in volunteers. Um, we've been able, though, to manage the way that we do things and organize in such a way with our member agencies and our suppliers uh, that hasn't had a major impact on the overall service we provide. Um, we've stretched things out, so it takes a little longer to do some things than maybe it would normally. Um, we have had to bring in some additional staffing, um, and we will be bringing in some summer support as well uh, to help deal with that. With deal with that. Um, but for the most part, yeah, we have seen a reduction and in the short term, we've been able to manage it. Our concern is that the longer this carries on, um, some of these other things that we built in um, may, uh, may be impacted and we may not be able to respond the same way. Yeah. So that's, I mean, it's actually really incredible that you guys have been able to sort everything out and, and continue to have things be working. But is, is that really the, the biggest challenge is sort of this long term planning with the current solutions or has there been another challenge that has been the, the greatest concern right now? Um, the biggest concern for us um, has been how do we grow quickly uh, to um, sort of meet the growing demand. Uh, there was an immediate run on demand and this immediate spike and then it's been sort of consistent since then. So our biggest concern was how do we scale quickly. Uh, while still remaining effective and efficient. So that was our biggest concern um, in the short term. Um, our, and in the longer term, it's very similar. We want to make sure that we're able to maintain a level of service that, uh, that meets the growing needs in our community um, and meets the, the ongoing chronic need in our community that, um, that will be part of the recovery period from all of this. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I know just kind of looking at the businesses that have been shutting down lately and just this crazy situation, there, there definitely is going to be a lot of uh, support required for everybody to be able to, to continue onwards. Um, has there been sort of something that's been able to give you guys hope through this? There's a lot of new need, there's a lot of challenges, but what's sort of been the biggest win so far? Uh, just the response from our community. Um, you know, we're, we're very lucky. We've, uh, we've got, the, we've got the, the financial and food support we need to be able to respond. Um, because our community has stepped up, our corporate partners, our individual community members have stepped up to uh, do food drives. They've stepped up to donate funds to help us do the work that we do. Um, so the biggest inspiration for us is that we have the support of our community to do our work, um, which is uh, which means that you know it's a it's a responsibility because we have to respond to that and that support. Um, but at the same time, we have the resources we need to be able to do it. So we just have to steward them and manage them. Um, appropriately and we'll be able to respond. So that's the thing that gives us the most hope. Uh, you know, our community in Durham has just stepped up in ways that they've always been hugely supportive of what we do, but their response in the last two months has been incredible. Wow. Now, if you're someone who maybe hasn't been able to get involved yet and has been kind of wondering, um, is there anything that you know business owners or just general people could do to participate and, and to be able to help with what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. The best way to find out about what we're up to is go to feedtheneedindurham.ca. Uh, any of our work, like food drives, things like that, is available there. General information about what we do is available there. Uh, but if you're just looking for a way to get involved, um, we're asking that people, you know, organize way or organize food drives. We've had people do it within their neighborhoods or within their companies or their businesses. Um, that we can help give guidance on how to do it safely while respecting physical distancing, uh, things like that. So they can talk to us about that. Um, or if you're not interested in doing that, um, raising funds, um, whether it's through your own fundraiser or making a donation, is always needed and welcome. Uh, helps us buy and store and distribute food. So those are the best ways for people to get involved right now. Um, as we go through this, we may have other ways for people to volunteer and support. So I encourage people to stay up to date with what we're doing and what our calls are uh, by visiting us online. So. Awesome. Now, uh, specifically in the restaurant industry or the food industry, that connection there, um, has there been an increase in, in restaurants that have been partnering with you guys and supporting? Is, is, or is that like a space that there could be some work? Um, 
there could be some work there. Uh, initially, we did have some reach out, especially in the first week or so as restaurants were closing and they realized they had stock that they didn't want to go bad. Uh, we absolutely were able to help them make donations of that and get it to people who, who could use it if the restaurants couldn't. Um, so that's been fantastic. Um, our bigger, the bigger place that we've been connected though is with your suppliers. Um, like the, the, large, the food suppliers that would typically be supplying restaurants um, have excess uh, food in larger volumes. And we've been connecting with uh, those organizations to get that food um, that would normally go into the restaurant industry into to people who need it. Um, so that it, it actually, it's a good thing. It keeps the supply chain moving. Even if, um, uh, even if restaurants aren't able to, to receive that now, it keeps the supply chain moving and ready uh, for when the, re when, when people do come back online. Uh, we're always open to different types of partnerships though. Um, and if the restaurants and local restaurants want to work with us uh, and find ways that we can work together, to support our community and especially through the recovery, then we're here to help. So definitely, hopefully with my business kind of trying to turn back into opening, there's that question of as you get back into your space, if you over order and the demand isn't there right yeah. away, then you're left with that extra sort of food waste potential, being able to do yeah. something with that as opposed to just having it be go bad, be a yeah. great possibility just as, as an easy start. Um, yeah. Speaking of suppliers is interesting though. Uh, has there been anything with like the GFS plant that was in Ajax that had just finished opening, right? As everything went on? Yeah. We were already starting to work with them. Um, so they, uh, as they came online, we were already working with them before uh, everything started to shut down. So we just expanded our work with them. They've been donating not just to us, but to other organizations as well, um, uh, locally, which is fantastic, getting food from their warehouse to places that need it. So very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's, it's actually also crazy just the amount of farming that goes on in Durham. I don't know uh, yeah. if exactly you guys work with sort of the local farmers, but I was speaking previously to Simon Gill. He had been mentioning kind of this, uh, this movement to try to be able to support our the produce that's provided in Ontario. And I don't know if you've uh, heard anything about the massive potato overstock that's going on like, yeah. around the world right now. Um, is that something that has impacted your ordering at all? Um, it hasn't directly impacted our ordering, uh, not yet. Um, we, we haven't really seen that trickle through the suppliers that we traditionally work with, uh, but that doesn't mean it won't. Um, but where we've seen it, it we do, we've had reach out from lots of local farm groups on other, um, uh, on other uh, products, especially dairy product. Um, there's, you know, uh, dairy, there's dairy quotas and they're still producing their milk, even if it's not being used, um, uh, by the commercial, uh, system. So we're seeing more access to things like milk and eggs and stuff like that. Um, very similar reason, right? Um, these are products that are normally created for a food system that uses them quickly, uh, and they're not being used as rapidly. So we're seeing it in other, other products, if not potatoes yet. Um, and we're seeing local farm groups and, and provincial farm groups step up and say, we want to help as well. And we want to make sure that we're not wasting food. Uh, and, and if people need it at this time, we're going to find ways to get it to them. So now uh, with those yeah. farmers and, and food waste, uh, there's also this fear of um, the meat packing plants that are being shut down during this time. So meat production kind of getting halted in some areas. Yeah. And then also uh, the lack of farm hands that are actually picking the produce as it comes into season yeah. and things rotting in fields. Um, is that something you can see uh, negatively impacting the supply chain and availability of food kind of going into the summer and later this year? Um, we're worried a little bit about it. Um, we're not, we haven't seen, um, we actually haven't seen uh, that yet. Uh, we are worried about um, certain products being interrupted uh, by that, uh, but we're not seeing it we're not worried about it overall in our supply, if that makes sense. So uh, we are, we may see a decrease in certain items and certain products being available, but we're not seeing an overall uh, concern at this time. Uh, we do worry if borders, the borders get more restricted or if um, the agricultural season can't be as productive as normal because of labor shortages and other things, we do worry a little bit uh, that we may see an impact. But as of right now, we haven't seen that impact other than things slowing down a little bit. Um, but we're, it's something we're keeping an eye on and, and worried about. So it, it worried about if, if things change. So okay. well, That's really yeah. good to hear about the production side. Um, Kind of actually a point that you brought up with the, you know, dairy in particular and eggs and those things not being used up so quickly by the restaurant system. Do you think that that's actually sort of like a plus and that maybe you guys are able to, people are enjoying this new availability of things that maybe were getting immediately snatched up by the more desirable and higher paying restaurants, I guess. Has that been something like feedback you've been getting? Um, not yet. No, we haven't heard much of that. Mostly we're, we, we've got a lot of community support uh, and we're not in competition. 
uh, with anywhere. Um, our job is to collect what's available and our job is to purchase what we need to support our, our community and our member agencies. Um, so we haven't had any negative feedback or flack at this point, um, but we're part of a food system and, that, and our goal is to remain um, a positive part of the food system and work with other partners within that food system. So. Awesome. I was thinking more just along the lines of now there's more milk available to you. So you're able to supply people with things that maybe were more difficult to acquire before when the restaurants were buying all of those things. That, yeah. We, yeah. I, I mean, I see that, but we haven't had any, we generally don't see feet flack on that type of thing or, or negative feedback on that. But that being said, if it's, if the, you're right, if the scale of what we're doing increases, yeah, we could see it. So. Cool. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of the, the general uh, main questions that I had for you about the operations currently. Um, is there anything that you think people should know about specifically from Feed the Need? If you're in Durham, mm -hmm. if you're a resident of the area, what's something to keep in mind right now? Um, I think the thing to keep in mind is that um, although we've had an initial sort of uh, period where, where everything sort of shut down and there's immediate needs that have been met, uh, this is going to go on for some time. Uh, the longer term needs that are going to be created out of this are, are what we're really thinking about now. Um, food security tends to become a larger problem after recessions. And this is one of the, this is the worst recession we've experienced in a generation uh, or more. Um, so, um, you know, food security tends to become a bigger issue after these situations. We expect it to become a, a quite a big one now. Um, so we are, uh, we want people to remember that, you know, it's not supporting your community is not just about right now and about the immediate impact of the pandemic. The recovery period is going to require everyone's support as well and everyone's cooperation as well. So is there just through the website a way to be yeah. able to be a part of that solution, that long term fix? Yeah, I would I would encourage people to stay connected with our website to see what we're up to. Um, to sort of keep an eye on what, what we're working on and reach out to us if they have questions about how they can help or if they just want to understand what's going on around food and food security uh, at this time, reach out and we're happy to talk. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's that's something that a lot of people are going to be worried about. So for sure. Um, I guess the last question that I have for you then is uh, who do you think people should hear from next? Um, you know, is there someone or an organization in the community that's really important that maybe isn't getting the spotlight that it needs right now or that has really important information for people? Um, i trying to think. Uh, you know, I think some of the funding bodies, like the United Ways, the Durham Community Foundations, um, really, they're doing great work to make sure resources are coming into our community uh, to help charities and not-for-profits do the work that they do. Um, so hearing from them and, and what they're up to and what their plans are would be, I think, uh, a, really, a really good thing that people should hear about. Awesome. I will, I will definitely follow up. Do you have anyone specific in mind? Uh, I would say the Durham Community Foundation uh, would be would be a place to go. It's Vivian Curl is their is their ED um, because they're taking a lead on a lot of the some, on bringing resources to our community in many ways. Yeah. Awesome. Sweet. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Ben. Yeah, uh, thank you. Incredible information on on food. And food Perfect. Safety. Awesome. Thank you. Talk soon. Talk soon. Bye.